Hello, and welcome to Acquire 4 in your red packet. Today we will be solving systems of equations. So last time in Acquire 3, a couple pages back in your packet, you learned how to write systems. So you took a word problem and you wrote two different equations. But we didn't really figure out the number of things that those problems were talking about. That's what we're going to do today. So those systems that we wrote last time, we're going to be solving today. Now, before we actually get to solving, we need to know, well, how do we know we have a solution? There are three possible types of solutions when we have a system of linear equations. So a system of linear equations gives us two equations. So those two equations translate to two lines on the same graph. So if I look at this first graph, what kind of lines are those? Now don't say straight or diagonal. They are Parallel lines. <clears throat> How many points do those lines have in common? Well, none. Because they are two completely different lines. How many solutions are there? Zero. Because there are no points in common. So what is the solution? There is no solution. because those lines don't touch. Now, if we look at the next set of lines right here, what kind of lines are those? Now, if you said perpendicular, you're not right. Remember that in order to have a set of perpendicular lines, they have to create a 90 degree angle. And none of these angles are 90 degrees. So they're not perpendicular, they're just intersecting. They just intersect. Now, how many points do they have in common? How many points do they share? If you said one, you are correct. That one point that I just circled. So they share one point in common, which means there is one solution. And that solution is written as an ordered pair because it's the point at which they cross. So if you look on your paper, they don't give us any numbers. They just say X, Y. So one solution written as an ordered pair. Now, for the last one, you may say, well, there's one line. Well, it looks like there's one line, but let me show you what's actually going on in this graph. So, I have one line, and then what's actually happening is I have another line directly on top of it. So, what happens when those two lines are on top of each other? What types of lines are they? They are overlapping. Well, how many points do they have in common? All of the points they share because it is two lines that are always touching. So how many solutions are there? There is an infinite number of solutions because every single point on that line or those lines is going to be a solution because the solution is where they touch or intersect. And because we have two lines directly on top of each other, there is always a solution. So there is an infinite number of solutions. So now we're going to get to actually solving. So this problem should look familiar because we wrote the system to this um, word problem 
in the last acquire, in acquire three. So it says the number of grocery items on two grocery lists differs by seven. The combined total of the items on both grocery lists is 33. Except now there's an extra part. Now it says how many items are on each list. So now there's actually a question that we have to answer. Last time we were just writing the two um, equations. So before we start writing any equation, we're going to assign our variables. We're going to use x and y because we're going to be learning how to solve these in the calculator. And in the calculator, we're only going to use the variables x and y. So you should remember this from last time. So x is the items on list 1. And y is the items on if you said list two, you are correct. So we're going to take this one sentence at a time because usually that's how we get our equations. So it says the number of grocery items on two grocery lists differs by seven. So remember there's operational words. Your teacher probably has a poster in their classroom that gives you words that mean add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Differs is like difference and difference means to subtract. So the difference of the two grocery lists is seven. So that means I am going to subtract my two lists. So I'm going to take list one minus list two, and that is going to give me the number seven. That whole first sentence is this equation. So in my class, I tell my students, to cross out that information because I've already used all of that to write this equation. So now I'm going to look at the next sentence. It says the combined total of items on both grocery lists is 33. So combined total tells me that I am going to add. And when you see the word is, that means equals. So the combined total of the items on both lists is 33. So this time I'm going to add the number of items on list 1 plus the number of items on list 2, and it's going to give me a total of 33. Okay, so this is where we stopped last time. But today they are asking how many items are on each list. So we need to figure out how many items are actually on list 1 and how many items are actually on list 2. And then when I find those two numbers and I subtract them, it should give me 7. But when I add them, it should give me 33. So we're going to do this using the calculator. And we're going to do this two different ways in the calculator. So grab your calculator. Go ahead and turn it on. And go home. Try to keep that glare off the screen. All right. First of all, do not use the scratch pad. If your teacher hasn't already told you, I tell my kids all the time, do not, do not, do not use the scratch pad. So we're going to do this first, and then we're going to go back and write the steps, because it's going to seem like a lot of steps, but the more you do this, the easier it'll get, and you'll remember the steps more. So we're going to do it together first, and then we'll go back and write the steps. So the first thing we're going to do is go home and open a new document. We're not going to save, and we are going to first solve by graphing. So we're going to add a graph. Okay. Now, if I look at my two equations, right? F of x equals is the same thing as y equals. Well, neither of my equations looks like y equals, so I can't start typing my equations right here because my calculator says y equals, and these don't. So in order to be able to type my equations the way they are, I am going to hit delete, and I'm going to go all the way down to relation. Relation allows you to type your equations in, in whatever form they're written. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my first equation, x minus y equals, remember the equal sign is underneath the control button, 7. And I'm going to hit enter. So there's my first line. So that is the line of this equation. Now, I need to see if they actually intersect. So I need to see if there's a solution. So I need to be able to graph the second line on the same screen. 
If you don't know how to do that, you do that by hitting tab, which is above the control button. So you hit tab, and it's going to open up this window again where I can type in my second equation. So this time I'm going to type in x plus y equals 33, and I'm going to hit enter. Now it looks like nothing happened, but it graphed. They're both on there. We just can't see them in the window or because the calculator is too close. So I need to zoom out. So the way we zoom out is we do menu. We're going to go down to window zoom. And we're going to zoom out. And hit enter. Now it's going to give you a little magnifying glass that has a minus sign because we're going to zoom out. And I'm going to hit enter. Don't hit it a bunch of times. Just do it one at a time until you need to stop. So if I hit it once, you can see that it looks different, but I still only see one line. So if I hit it again, now I see that point of intersection. So there is a solution. It's where those two lines intersect. Well, what is that point? You can try to count, but sometimes it can get really hard. The calculator can do all of the work for you. So now we need to find what that actual ordered pair of where they intersect is. We're going to go menu again. This time we're going to analyze the graph. And what do you think I'm going to choose? Whoops. Analyze graph. Intersection. Okay. Usually it's going to give you this dotted line that you can kind of drag around. Sometimes it doesn't, so the next example is going to be a little different. But it's going to give you this line that you can drag. It doesn't matter if you start on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of that point of intersection. It's already on the left-hand side, so I'm going to click it, and it's going to leave a dotted line there. And then I'm going to slide it over. See how that dotted line stayed there? I'm going to slide it over until I get to the other side of where those lines intersect. So pretty much you're trying to highlight that point of intersection. And you can already see what the point is, but once I click again, it tells me that the ordered pair or the solution is 20, 13. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down right here at the bottom where it's a solution, and then we'll write the steps. So my solution was 20, 13. And we'll go back and figure out what all that means. So we're going to write the steps of how we did that in the calculator because that was the first time we've done it and it's a lot of steps and you may have gotten confused. So first, we go home, new document, don't save, and then we add a graph. Then, before we start typing anything in, we hit delete. We go to relation. And then you type equation one and hit enter. And then it's going to graph it. And then to type the second equation, we're going to so we're going to hit tab to be able to type in our second equation, and we're going to type equation 2. Now remember when I graphed the second equation, it looked like nothing happened, but that was because we needed to zoom out. So sometimes you may have to zoom out, sometimes you may not. Sometimes after you graph the second equation, you'll be able to see it on the screen. So. I'm going to zoom out by starting with menu, and then we're going to hit zoom. It says window zoom, but most teachers just say zoom. And we are going to zoom out as needed, because you may not have to hit enter on the little magnifying glass as many times. Once you zoom out and you can see the point of intersection, we're going to find that point of intersection by hitting Menu, Analyze Graph, and then we are looking for the intersection. Okay. 
once you get that dotted line, you're going to click on one side of the point of intersection. You're going to slide it over to the other side to make sure you highlight that point of intersection. And then you're going to click again. So we already did all of this. We just did it first and then we wrote it down. So we're going to find that point of intersection. When we did all of these steps in the calculator, it gave us 2013. Okay, so that was our end result of doing all of these steps. Now, the question was, way up here highlighted, says how many items are on each list? Well, 2013 tells me nothing. It just tells me that that's a point where they intersect. So I need to be able to take that information from that ordered pair to actually answer the question. So 20 is in the X place of my ordered pair, because remember when we have an ordered pair, it is X comma Y. So what does X represent in our system? Well, up at the very top, before we wrote our systems, we said X is the number of items on list one. So how many items are on list one? There are 20 items. How many items are on list two? Well, list two is represented by variable Y. And in the Y place, there's a 13. So that means there are 13 items on list two. Okay, that's one way of using the calculator. I'm gonna show you a second way, which is a little bit faster. And then we'll write the steps. There aren't as many steps to write. So we're gonna start in a similar way. We're gonna go home. New document, don't save, but this time we're going to add a calculator, so we're not graphing this time, okay? Now, a lot of you are very, very familiar with nSolve, and some of you think that you can use nSolve for everything. If you don't know what it is, don't worry about it, but you're going to get to this next um, process kind of the same way you get to nSolve. So we're going to go menu. We are in algebra class. And then look at that menu. What do you think I'm going to choose? Think about what the title of this lesson is. If you said solve system of linear equations, you are correct. Now this screen we never do anything with, but I'll just tell you what it means. It says number of equations. Well, I have two because I wrote two different equations and the variables I'm using are X and Y. So here you can kind of skip and just go down to OK. And it's going to give you this screen that says Lin solve for linear solve. I have two different boxes, and I have two different equations. So the first box is for the first equation, and the second box is for the second equation. So I'm going to type in my first equation first, x minus y equals 7. I'm going to arrow down, and then in the second box, I'm going to type in my second equation, x plus y equals 33. Now double check that they look the way you wrote them on your paper. Once you make sure that they are correct, you hit enter. And it gives us the exact same ordered pair that we got when we did all of these steps and graphed. Now the only difference is this um, method gives you the ordered pair in those curly brackets or the braces, but you just need to know that you need to write it just as an ordered pair with regular parentheses. And this means the same thing because we used the same equations. So how many items are on list one? Well, there's still 20 items because my X value is still 20. And how many items are on list two? Well, there's still 13 because my Y is still 13. So now we're gonna write these steps because these aren't as long. So we start similar to the way we started for graphing. We're gonna go home. We're going to go new document. We don't save. But this time we add a calculator. Okay. Next, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause it to write everything down that you need to write and then push play again. We're going to hit menu, 
And remember that if you have questions and you're watching this in class, or if you're sitting in the hallway because you can't handle being in class, pause it and ask questions. Just because you're watching a video doesn't mean that you can't pause it to ask the question. So menu, algebra, solve system of linear equation. And then we're going to go to, okay. Right, because on that screen, you just go to okay because we don't change anything. And then it's going to give you the screen that looks like this. Lin, solve. You're going to type in equation one. You type in equation two. And then the rest of it looks something like this. And then your solution is going to be your x and y um, in that ordered pair. So, I know that was a lot. But now that we have all those steps written down, we don't have to write them down again. And you can always go back and look at them if you get stuck. So we're going to do a couple more examples. So this one says, a rectangular field is 12 feet longer than it is wide. And its perimeter is 76 feet. And they want us to find the width. So again, this is the same problem from acquire three, but this time they want us to actually solve it. So they have asked us to actually find the width. So that is what we are answering. Last time we were just writing the equations. So I'm gonna assign my two variables. If you remember from last time, our two variables were length and width. So I'm gonna make X my length and Y my width. So the first sentence says, a rectangular field is 12 feet longer than it is wide. So that means the length is bigger than the width. So to get the length, oh, 12 feet longer tells me to add 12. So to get the length, which is x, I am going to add 12 to the width, which is y. So that 12 feet longer than is what we call a switch phrase. It means I'm going to add 12, but I'm going to do that at the very end of my equation. So this whole sentence is gone. I have already written it. Its perimeter is 76 feet. Well, you probably worked on the formula for the perimeter last time. The perimeter of a rectangle or any shape is found by adding all the sides. In a rectangle, I have two lengths, which means 2x, and I add it to the two widths and they tell me that the perimeter is 76 right remember is means equals so those are my two equations so once i have the two equations pause the video and i want you to find the solution by graphing or by using the calculator you can choose and remember if you get stuck you have all of the steps written over here. Don't use these equations. Just follow these steps if you get stuck, but use these two equations. So I'm going to, I want you to pause, find the answer, and then push play to see if you got it right. So if you actually did what you were supposed to do and you paused it and either solved by graphing or by using um, system solve in the calculator, you should have gotten the ordered pair 25, 13. I like to do system solve because it's less steps, but if you like to graph, that's fine. So what does this mean? They want us to find the width. Well, 25 is in the x place, and x place was the length, so I'm going to go ahead and write that in. The length is 25, what, apples, bananas, pencils, shoes? No, Miss Flores, it is 25 feet, so you need to make sure that you are actually answering the question. So if the length is 25 feet, that means the width, which is my y value, is 13 feet. So if this were multiple choice on a test, your answer would be 13 feet. Yes, we get both answers in the solution, but the one they're actually looking for is 13. So I'm going to skip over 3 and 4. 
because that's just more practice of what we did. If you have those um, systems written already from last time, then you can graph them or do system solver and find those solutions. And I'm going to skip down to 5, 6, and 7. So these look a little different, and these don't take as much work because they um, the systems are already written. So you don't have to write the equations. The equations are already given to you. So I'm going to start by graphing because we have a graph, and we're just going to kind of sketch what it looks like. So I'm going to go home, new document, don't save, add a graph. And remember, before we start doing anything else, we hit delete. We go down to relation, and I'm going to type my equations in. Plus y equals negative 24. Hit enter. Tab, negative 5x minus 3y equals negative 28. And see, this time I don't really have to zoom out. I can see that they intersect. That equation up here is kind of in the way. So you can zoom out if you want. If you know how to drag it so that you don't have to zoom out, that's fine. So there it is, right? Menu, analyze graph, intersection, click, whoops, click, slide, click. So my solution is 2 comma 6. That is where these two points intersect. So on my graph, this is where they intersect. And I'm just going to kind of sketch what they would look like, just so we know why it is 2 comma 6, because that's where those two lines intersect. All right, so now I'm going to do the next one. I'm going to graph it again. Delete, relation, um, x minus 3, whoops, y equals, Miss Flores, y equals x minus 3, tab, y equals x plus 1. What kind of lines are those? Parallel. So what does that mean? What has to happen in order to have a solution? the two lines have to intersect. No intersection means no solution. And if I graph these, remember we start with our y-intercept. My y-intercept is negative 3. My slope in front of x is 1, so that means up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. I don't have a ruler, so I'm just going to pretend that that's straight. Y-intercept here is positive 1. Slope is also 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. And if you graph them, you can tell that they're going to be parallel. You can also tell that they're going to be parallel by looking just at the slopes, because remember that parallel lines have the same slope. And both of these have an imaginary 1 in front of x. So the last one. So I'm going to graph this one. Oh, if we do, actually, I'm going to do system solver here so you can see what it looks like um, when there's no solution. So remember, we do this in a calculator. Menu, algebra, solve system. You just go down to OK. I type in y equals x minus 3. Arrow down, y equals x plus 1. And it tells you no solution found because they don't intersect. So that means there's no solution. Okay, so the last one, I'm going to do this one in um, System Solver first because we're already here. So I don't have to start all the way over. I can just start from Menu, Algebra, Solve System, OK, 5x minus y equals 12. Don't hit Enter. I sometimes try to hit Enter. But remember, you got to arrow down to type in the second equation. So 10x minus 2y equals 24. And it gives us this crazy looking answer that we've never seen before, right? Well, I don't know what that means, but I'm going to write it down. C1 over 5 plus 12 over 5 comma C1. All right, and I'm going to put it in parentheses. Well, I have no clue what that means. But we know another way to check our answer. We can also graph this. So, 
I'm going to graph this to see if maybe I did something wrong. Okay, so graph delete relation 5x minus y equals 12. Enter. I'm going to tab to type in my second equation. 10x minus 2y equals 24. And if you paid attention, it graphed directly on top of that same graph that was already there. So what it looked like was this. I'm going to try to kind of sketch this on my graph, right? It was like this. And then when I hit enter for my second line, it graphed directly on top of the graph that was already there. So what kind of lines are those? Overlapping. So if they're overlapping, they are always touching. Every time that they touch, that is a solution. So the solution is infinite for this one. Now, you have 11 apply problems. We did quite a few examples. And you should have the steps written. So now it's your turn. Write your systems, and hey, guess what? A lot of these problems that you should be writing the equations for are the same problems from Apply 3. So if you did your homework last time, or you finished it in class, you wrote all these equations, you may not have to write them because you can just copy them over because a lot of them are the same problems. Good luck. Don't forget to ask questions if you have them.